Today we are going to do the method of joints. Um, so the first question is going to be, so we can say part A, is going to be reactions at the supports and in part B we are going to do forces in each member of the truss. Starting with part A, for the reactions at supports, so we need to do first the free body diagram so basically we need to isolate our truss from the supports and replace the supports with the reactions. So basically what I'm saying is we need to... So I'm going to draw again our truss. We have joint A, joint B, joint C. We need to represent all the external loading, so this 500 newtons needs to be included in joint B. And now, in the supports, in support A, it is uh, double fixed. So basically, if we if we want to move, if we want to move point A in the horizontal direction, that is not allowed. So this means that we need to include in point A an horizontal reaction. I'm going to call it AX. Same thing for the vertical direction. So if I want to move point A in the vertical direction like this, the support will not allow that. That is not possible. So when this movement is constrained, we need to include a reaction in that direction. So this means that I will have to have a vertical reaction as well that I will call a y. Let me just delete this a little bit. So this is my point a. This one. Now we only need no reactions at point c. So at point c, again, if I want to move point C in the horizontal direction like this, this movement is not allowed. The support is constraining this movement. So this means that I will have to have a horizontal reaction at point C. This one that I will call Cx. If I think now, if I want to move point C in the vertical direction, as you can see in this figure for the support, this, these rollers here will allow the movement in the vertical direction. So this means this movement is possible. So if the movement of point C in the vertical direction is possible, it means that we will not have any reaction, any vertical reaction at point C. So at point C, the only reaction we have is Cx, this one. That's all we have. The next thing we need to do in a free body diagram is we need to include a coordinate system. So I'm going to include a coordinate system with origin at point C. And I'm representing it in red color. So this is going to be my X axis. This is going to be my Y axis. And so this is my free body diagram, that's all we have. And next step, what we need to do now is to use the equilibrium equations. I'm going to write here, equilibrium equations for 
this free body diagram. So basically we are going to say summation of forces in the x direction they need to be equal to zero to be in equilibrium. Summation of forces in the y direction they need to be equal to zero to be in equilibrium. Summation of moments about any point that we, that we want. I'm going to choose point A. Summation of moments about point A they need to be equal to zero. These are our three equilibrium equations and from these three equilibrium equations we will be able to calculate the reactions AX, AY and CX. So we will have at the end three equations for three reactions. So writing, starting with the first equation, summation of forces in the X direction equal to zero. We have in the X direction we have reaction at point A, AX we have reaction at point C, Cx, that's all we have in the horizontal direction, so this needs to be equal to zero. Second equilibrium equation, summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero. In the y direction we have the reaction at point A, and we have the external load 500 newtons, so is minus 500 because this force is opposite with our positive y-axis and this needs to be equal to zero to be in equilibrium now moments about point A uh, these two reactions AX, AY they don't produce any moment about point A they are passing through point A these forces so let's start with the moment produced by reaction Cx about point A that moment is given by, is given by uh, this length which is 2 meters times the force which is Cx and the other moment we need to include is the moment produced by this external force about point A and that moment is given by this length now, which is also 2 meters, times the external load, which is 500 newtons, and the moment produced by this external load is going to be negative because the moment about point A produced by this load is going to be clockwise. Clockwise is negative for this coordinate system. And so this needs to be equal to zero to be in equilibrium. So if we solve this uh, system of equations, we will have the horizontal reaction AY equal to 500 newtons. The horizontal reaction CX also equal to 500 newtons. And if we replace CX in the first equation, we get the horizontal reaction AX equal to minus 500 newtons it is uh, interesting to see that we obtain the negative reaction minus 500 newtons for the horizontal reaction at point a what does this mean this means that the initial this initial orientation for this reaction that we said initial orientation is positive with the x axis it means it is it should be opposite so basically what we are saying is that my reaction ax should be so I'm going to delete here my reaction ax should be pointing oh sorry should be pointing to the left like this and the absolute value of this force is 500 newtons reaction ay we obtain the positive number so this means that our reaction, our initial orientation for reaction AY was correct. So I can just replace now here by the absolute value of the force, which is 500 newtons. Same thing for reaction CX, we obtain the positive value for the force. So this means that our reaction, our initial orientation for the reaction at point C was correct so I can just now say that this is going to be 
500 newton. So this was the free body diagram for the truss and with the free body diagram for the truss we were able to calculate the reactions at the supports. What we are going to do now is we are going to do part B which is forces at each member of the truss and we are going to use the method of joints. So basically what we have to do is uh, we have to isolate our joints. So we have to do free body diagrams for our joints. So I'm going to draw again the truss. So we have this truss. We have these three joints here, joint at point A, joint at point B, and joint at point C. We can include the reactions because we know already, so it's 500 here, 500 newtons, 500 newtons at point A, and 500 newtons vertical reaction at point A as well and at joint B we have the external load of 500 newtons so if I isolate my joint B and represent all the forces that are acting on joint B I will have something like this so I can draw my joint B here so this is going to be my joint B and the forces I will have are going to be the 500 newtons the external load is one I also have I have my bar AB that is attached to my joint B is connected to my joint B so for example if I pull my bar AB to the left so bar AB will also be pulling joint B to the left so I need to include here at my joint B force that I will call force FAB that represents the force that bar AB is doing on my joint B same thing for bar BC, this one here. Bar BC is also attached or connected to my joint B, so I need to include in my joint B the force that my bar BC is doing at joint B, and this force is FBC. The only thing we need to do now is we need to include a coordinate system x y in this case with origin at joint b and what we obtain is the free body diagram for joint b the only thing we need to do now is to write the equilibrium equations uh, for the free body diagram of uh, joint b uh, so this is the free body diagram for the equilibrium of a point so we have only two equilibrium equations summation of forces in the x direction need to be equal to zero summation of forces in the y direction need to be equal to zero so if we start with the first equation the forces we have in the horizontal direction is FAB so is a FAB is the opposite with x direction so that's why we have here minus FAB and we also need to project FBC in the horizontal direction uh, and this is the result of that projection so also minus FBC cosine of 45 degrees now for the forces in the horizontal in the vertical direction we have the external load minus 500 newtons and we have force in bar BC that when projected into vertical direction gives minus FBC sine of 45 degrees. Um, if we solve this system of equations, so basically here we have a system of two equations for two unknowns. 
if we solve this system of equations we obtain FAB equal to 500 newtons and FBC minus 707.1 newtons We can now replace the, the forces in bar AB and bar BC by the, the values we obtain. So I'm going to draw again my joint B. So we have 500 newtons here. We have FAB 500 newtons positive. So positive means we keep the same orientation, same initial orientation for this force vector so we are going to have this force from bar AB which is 500 newtons and now for bar BC we obtained a negative force of 707.1 newtons so it means that we need to reverse the direction of this vector so it means that the force that we will have is this one and this is 707.1 newtons as you can see we reverse the orientation of uh, this force okay so let's let us start with this with this sorry with this this force here for some reason this is not working very well uh, further need so this don't forget this is the force that our bar AB is doing on, on our joint B so what is going to happen is because of Newton's Newton's third law our joint B will then react in our bar AB with the same value for the force but in the opposite direction so this is action reaction newton's third law so if i if i draw here if i draw here my bar a b so let's say this is my point a this is my joint b what i will have is at point b i will have a force of 500 newtons so the same force but if you look carefully this orientation is opposite with this orientation because of Newton's third law so this is really really very important and if you now consider this bar AB only if I put this 500 newtons here at point B in my bar AB the bar AB is not going to be in equilibrium anymore it, that is very easy to see uh, this force 500 newtons is not being in equilibrium with any other force so what we need to do is we need to include now here at point A the same force of 500 newtons but with opposite direction with the force that we have at point B so that now bar AB is in equilibrium and if you look carefully at bar AB under these conditions so we can say that bar AB is under a tension force of 500 newtons a positive tension force of 500 newtons is being stretched we can do the same analysis now for our bar BC our bar BC uh, by the way I think I I think I had a mistake here this is not this one here this is not bar ac this is bar bc sorry for that so i'm going to correct it now uh, i'm going to uh, sorry for this mistake so this is fbc and of course 
this one here is also FBC and this is FBC as well right and this one so we have BC FBC FBC sorry for this mistake but we can continue now our analysis so let's do the same analysis we did for bar AB let's do it for bar BC so let's concentrate now let's focus now on this force here this is the force that bar BC is doing on our joint B 707.1 newtons so this means that if we draw here our bar BC so this is my point C this is my point B so this is our bar BC we will have to have here at point B the same 707.1 newtons but opposite so this force should be opposite with this one Newton's third law again and if I look if I look at my bar BC under the action of this force of 707.1 Newton's at point B this bar is not in equilibrium so what I have to do to restore the equilibrium is I have to include here a force of 707.1 newtons but this force should be so this force should be opposite with this one so that they cancel each other and the bar BC is in equilibrium right so as you can see now for from the bar BC this bar BC is under the action of a compressive force of 707.1 newtons uh, so bar BC is in compression so we can say so bar BC is in compression and bar AB is in tension so this analysis is very important uh, to do so we have so let's let's see so we have the force in bar AB we have the force in bar BC uh, the only thing we need now to do is calculate the force in bar AC and um, for that I'm going to uh, isolate now joint A so I'm going to isolate joint A and represent all the forces that are included in joint A so if this is my joint A what do I have at joint A? I have the reactions I have 500 newtons horizontal reaction so this one 500 newtons I have also um, the vertical reaction of 500 newtons I'm going to include it here 500 newtons here uh, and what do I have more at joint A so I have bar AB and bar AC connecting at joint A so let's say bar let's start with bar AC so I'm going to include here the force from bar AC and from bar AB we know already that the force so if you look here this analysis we did we know this 500 newtons at point A in my bar AB represents what represents the force that my joint A is doing in my bar AB and what is going to happen according to the Newton's third law is my bar AB will react with the same force but with opposite direction in joint A so what we have to do is we have to include in joint A the same 500 Newtons but now in the opposite direction 
from this one here from this one here this is the force in point a force that the joint is doing in the bar the bar will then react in the joint with the same force but in the opposite direction this is extremely important if you don't if you don't give the correct orientations everything is wrong so we need now to include the coordinate system so let's say this is my x direction this is my y direction and so this is my free body diagram of my joint a and the only thing I need to do again is to use the equilibrium equations for my joint A. So is the equilibrium of a point, summation of forces in the x direction equal to zero, summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero. So in the x direction we have 500 minus 500 equal to zero of course so point a is in equilibrium in the vertical direction we have 500 newtons minus fac needs to be equal to zero to be in equilibrium and from this equation we get the value for the force in the bar ac which is 500 newtons so positive what does this mean this means that so if this is my point A, if I have 500 newtons force in bar AC, if this is my bar AC, so this is point C, point A, this means, according to Newton's third law, I will have to have here a force in point A, which is also 500 newtons, but is opposite with this one. And of course that I will have here 500 newtons as well otherwise my bar AC is not in equilibrium and everything every member every bar every joint everything the entire thrust everything is in equilibrium so if we look now again my our bar AC we conclude that bar AC is also in tension and the force in bar AC is 500 newtons.